guys! Today I'm gonna be doing my January book haul video. I have a lot of books that I hauled in January, but I know that I said that I was gonna get less books per month this year. I think I did get a little bit less. I did have a bunch of books that were sent to me by publishers, and I also had some books that I ordered in December that didn't show up until like mid-January because book depository. So yeah, that's why this haul is a little bit bigger than I was anticipating, but here we go. The first book that I got that I'm really happy about is The Gilded Wolves by Roshni Chokshi. I was fortunate enough to get to go and moderate Roshni's event in New York City, and I got to talk with her and S.A. Chakravorty and Melissa Albert, and it was so much fun, and I'm so grateful for that opportunity. It was, like, absolutely incredible, but I already read Gilded Wolves in December, so they asked me, like, after I had read it and loved it, which was nice. So I've been planning on getting it, of course, but I was able to get it now and have Roshni sign it. So it just says to Kristen, thank you. So that is like a really nice memory now that I will have forever in my collection. Oh, also though, just look at how pretty this book is beneath the cover. I'm obsessed. Next will be no surprise to anyone, but I got three copies of The Wicked King. So we have the US cover, which is so beautiful and actually my favorite of all of them. And this has, oh, look, I also went to this event. So I got some artwork from Holly and I have this book signed by Holly. Very exciting. But beneath this dust jacket, oh, so beautiful. Then we have the Barnes and Noble exclusive edition, which is the beautiful black cover. And I ordered my copy through Good Choice Reading. So again, I've got this one signed as well. And I really like how they reversed what's beneath the cover. So that one has a white cover with a black hardback. And then this one has black cover with a white hardback. And it's also like a seafoam green and I love it. And then finally, I ordered the special Owl Crate box that was just Wicked King themed. And I'm so glad that I did because there was like really great stuff in there. But then I got my Owl Crate exclusive Wicked King copy. And and this one is, I actually like this one better than the first cover. I think that went in a good direction. This one too is signed by Holly, but not personalized because it was a box. And this one has the black hardcover. I love this series so damn much. I really want to already reread these. Like, I need to. This series is just so good. Then I have The Winter of the Witch by Catherine Arden, and this was sent to me by Random House, so thank you so much, Random House. I'm really looking forward to reading The Girl in the Tower and then diving right into The Winter of the Witch, and this will be another series that I'm planning on completing this year. It's The Winter Night Trilogy by Catherine Arden. I really enjoyed The Bear and the Nightingale, and I've heard that the series just keeps getting better, so I'm quite excited to read this one. Next, I got Famous in a Small Town by Emma Mills. I have to say you will definitely hear more about this in my wrap-up but I was kind of disappointed in this book it really just was not what I was hoping for but I love Emma Mills so much so I was kind of going back and forth on whether or not I wanted to get myself a finished copy or not and I decided that because Emma really is one of my favorite authors I do want to have her entire collection and her books are always so pretty so I could kind of justify it that way so yeah I do think that this is a gorgeous cover, but I am also disappointed with this hardcover because it's like speckled and that's it. And usually she has such beautiful and intricate designs on her hardcovers and there's just nothing there. So that was, that was also disappointing. Next, I got a copy of Circle of Shadows by Evelyn Skye. This was sent to me by HarperCollins. So thank you so much, Harper. I'm really interested in this one because it is an Asian inspired fantasy and it takes place in Japan. And as you guys know, I love all things Japan, so I've been very much looking forward to reading this one. And our two main characters are warriors in this secret society, and they're like approaching graduation, and then they're gonna have to deal with everything going on in the Blood Rift Rebellion, and it sounds like it's gonna be awesome. Then I have a finished copy of The Last Life of Prince Alistair by Alexandra Bracken. This one I'm really looking forward to reading. I read the first one, The Dreadful Tale of Prosper Redding, last year, and I really enjoyed it, so I'm very much looking forward to finding out the conclusion of this story. And again, this one has beautiful end papers. Then Fierce Reads sent me a copy of Speak by Laurie Halls Anderson. This is the new 20th anniversary edition of this book. It is one that I read when I was in high school and it is a very powerful read. It is about rape, so there's definite 
uh, trigger warning for that if that's something that you can't read about. And it has a new introduction by Ashley C. Ford and it also has an afterword by Jason Reynolds. I kind of want to reread this and revisit this story because it's been so long since I've read it. But if I'm remembering correctly, it is something that is still extremely relevant to today and I really want to see how the story holds up. I also got a copy of Undying by Megan Spooner and Amy Kaufman and this is the conclusion to the Unearthed duology. This is another one where I read the first one last year and I really enjoyed it so I'm really looking forward to finding out the conclusion and I'm loving that there are so many duologies because I'm going to like knock my completed series goal out of the park this year. <laughs> then I picked up a copy of The Wicker King by Kay Ancrum and the reason that I picked this one up is because it was the January book of the month for my friend Amy from A Court of Crowns and Quills and Mel from Mel to the Ennies book club which is called the Dragons and Tea book club. I ordered it from Target and it ended up coming a little bit later in the month so I actually haven't had a chance to read it just yet but I really do want to get to it very soon. Seems like most of the people who read it during the book club week enjoyed it and I really like how the pages continue to get darker as the story goes on because it is a dark fantasy and I believe that a lot of it is told through like mixed media and like kind of case files. So I'm I'm really looking forward to reading this one. Next I've got some fantasy books, then I've got some adult books, then I've got some pretty classics, and then I'll be doing my Owl Crate unboxing, so get ready. So first I picked up The Last Wish by Andrzej Sapkowski, which I know I'm not saying correctly, but I believe that he's a Polish author and this is the first book in the Witcher series and I've been very much wanting to get into the series. I did not realize how short this book is so I have a feeling that I will be picking it up very very soon and hopefully loving it and then diving into the rest of the series before the adaptation hits us I think later this year. But there's like a popular video game series based on it and it just looks awesome. Then I picked up The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan. This is the first book in the Wheel of Time series and this is a fantasy series that I've been wanting to read like forever because it is just so well known and so deeply loved among so many readers and it's one that I haven't gotten to yet and I'm pretty ashamed of that. It's quite large. When I was like doing more research about it recently, I noticed that it was actually published in the 90s and for some reason I really thought that it was like an older, more classic fantasy. I didn't realize how new it is. So that also kind of makes me more interested in reading it right away because I feel like it won't be as challenging to get through, although I know that it is quite dense. There is also an adaptation coming of this to Amazon, which I've talked about extensively in my news videos. I really want to have the first book read by the time that adaptation comes out. And also, fun fact if you don't know, I want to say there are like 15 books in the series, but Robert Jordan actually passed away before he was able to complete the series and Brandon Sanderson took over and he wrote the last couple of books because Robert Jordan told him like how it was going to end before he passed, which is crazy. Then I got this beautiful special edition of The Last Unicorn by Peter S. Beagle and it has an introduction by Patrick Rothfuss who is just one of my favorite people ever, so I'm really looking forward to rereading this. I read The Last Unicorn for the first time last year and I totally fell in love with the story. It ended up being one of my favorite books of the year, so when I saw this hardcover special edition I could not resist and I'm so excited. Then I also got The Tough Guide to Fantasyland by Diana Wynne-Jones. The author may sound familiar to you because Diana Wynne-Jones actually wrote Howl's Moving Castle in that series and a whole lot of other like magical middle grade, but this is supposed to be such a funny book because it really just like tears apart fantasy tropes and like the things that you normally find in fantasy and I know that a ton of writers use it as a reference because it's really just very helpful in breaking everything down and it had gone out of print a while ago but it's thankfully back in print now so I wanted to pick up a copy and it is Dark Lord approved. More like an encyclopedia than a traditional novel format. Then I have a couple of books that publishers were kind enough to send me. The first one being The Gown by Jennifer Robson. This is an historical fiction novel and it takes place in 1947 in London and it follows the girls who actually make Queen Elizabeth's wedding dress, which is one of the most iconic dresses in history, so I'm very much looking forward to reading this one. I recently read The Paris Seamstress and I 
freaking love that. So I have a feeling that this will be another favorite of mine. Then I have 99% Mine, and this one I am also really looking forward to reading. This is by Sally Thorne, who's the author of The Hating Game, and I'm planning on reading this book during Contemporary-a-thon, so spoilers for my Contemporary-a-thon TBR, but this is one that I'm definitely planning on getting to, like, ASAP. Then I picked up a copy of The Au Pair by Emma Rios. This is a new adult thriller, and it sounds like it's gonna be really good. My friend Christina from Girl in the Pages, which is a blog, she read and reviewed this one, and she really enjoyed it, so now I have very high hopes for it. I picked it up on a recent trip to Barnes & Noble, and I cannot wait to read it. And another historical fiction that I got this month is The Girls in the Picture by Melanie Benjamin. I have been just falling in love with adult historical fiction, so this sounded like it would be right up my alley. Melanie Benjamin also wrote The Swans of Fifth Avenue, and I also have that book, so I do want to read a bunch of her backlist throughout this year. This one takes place in 1914 in Hollywood and it follows two very famous actresses from the time, Frances Marion and Mary Pickford, and I'm really just so excited to learn more about both of them and to learn just about Hollywood like during that era. It sounds like it's gonna be fascinating. And then the last adult book that I have here is The Library Book by Susan Orlean. This is actually a nonfiction book and I picked this one up because it's part of Reese Witherspoon's book club and Alexa and I are planning on doing a nonfiction kind of month. So this is one that I really want to read. It's a true story about when the Los Angeles Public Library went on fire and it sounds like it's going to be really interesting. Actually one more adult book. I got Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. This is actually the Waterstones exclusive edition and it is signed by the author. I ordered this one from Waterstones back in December but it didn't come until like almost the end of January actually. But I'm pretty excited to read this one. This is another adult novel and I, I have a feeling that I'm going to love it. I also just love this design. So nice. Now for some classics. I finally, finally, finally found a beautiful edition of Watership Down by Richard Adams. I'm so happy because I loved this book so much when I was younger, so much. And I, I think that this is largely why I love rabbits so much. So I had been looking for a pretty edition for like years and years and years, but I had never found anything. I always have like the same paperback that I was just like whatever about, but I finally upgraded and now I have this beautiful cloth bound edition that I got from Book Depository and I'm so excited. I love it. And it also has like a ribbon bookmark, like just everything about it is so nice. And it even has nice end papers and like, yeah, this was a good purchase. Then I got two beautiful slipcase editions of books. So the first one is Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. This is by Arcticus Books, and this I also got from Book Depository, but this is a slipcase, so this is the actual hardcover, and I love it. It's gorgeous. It also has illustrations in it, and I just love that there's like a little heart at the top of every page and the bottom of every page. I'm so excited about this. They're doing Anne of Green Gables version, and you can bet that I pre-ordered that one. And they also did a secret garden version, which is stunning. I love it. <laughs> I really love all of these editions that Articus has been putting out lately. They're just amazing. And then I also got their mini editions of two Jane Austen books that I have yet to read. The first one being Mansfield Park and the second one being Sense and Sensibility. And I really chose these because they both had patterned hearts and I just thought that they were really pretty and I do want to read these this year. And now for the Owl Crate unboxing. This is the January Owl Crate and I will leave a link to my code down below in case you have not yet subscribed to Owl Crate. You can get a discount using my code. I predicted the book that would be in this box and I know for a fact that I'm correct. So I'm looking forward to seeing what the exclusive cover looks like. Alrighty. So the theme is magical artifacts and here we have the spoiler card which I am just going to place over there. So first we have this button that says wolves were everywhere and it has a wolf head but it kind of looks like a fox to me and you guys know how much I love foxes so this is really cute. Then, ooh. Then we've got this gorgeous bracelet. It's like a gold bracelet and it looks like thorns or it looks like a tree branch. Let's put that on. It's so pretty. Oh, I love it. I wonder if that's for anything. Oh, it's from the Grisha Trilogy. This is an antler bracelet to amplify your powers. I love it. Oh, speaking of the Grisha Trilogy, I'm also getting King of Scars, but I'm going to the event. So that's why there was no King of Scars in this book haul. Then we've got some Deathly Hollows socks. Ooh, I'm like tearing this. <laughs> 
Then we've got this gorgeous pouch, which is a darker shade of magic. It says Kel wore a very peculiar coat. And then we've got all of the colors of the different Londons. This is gorgeous. And then the back of it says as Travars, which means to travel. I'm totally going to use this for bullet journal pens when I am bullet journaling on the go. I like this a lot. Who did who designed this? And this was designed by Stella Bookish Art. I always love the things that she designs for Apple Crate. Then we've got Bilbo Baggins' sword. <laughs> it's Sting. That is so cool. I'm going to put it in here so that you can like see it a little bit better. I mean, I will do close-ups and stuff too, but that's awesome the elvish blade. Oh, and it works great as a letter opener. That's good to know. That is so cute. This is definitely going on my Lord of the Rings shelf. Then we've got a little luggage tag and this actually has, ooh, dropping. This actually has the symbol on it that's on the hardcover of The Gilded Wolves, which is the book in this box. This is nice. Then we've got this, which is, which is based on Philip Pullman's His Dark Materials. And it says, without stories, we wouldn't be human beings at all. Philip Pullman. And we've got the polar bear and got like a clock there. This is really cool. And it's satin. It's a nice little wall tapestry. Next we've got the book. I'm honestly just so happy that Gilded Wolves came in Owl Crate because that will give a lot more people the opportunity to read it who might not have had it on their radar. I, like I said, truly enjoyed this one. I think it is so beautifully written and Roshni just did such an incredible job with it. It's kind of like, it's so like heisty and has like Indiana Jones vibes and it's also like kind of like Six of Crows-esque, but the characters are like to die for. The original cover, this is all gold, but on here it's silver and then they've added in these blue flowers. It's really pretty. And the text too is this like bluish silver color. And then it's also signed by Roshni and we've got our letter from Roshni. Then we've got the little Owl Crate booklet. That's kind of funny. So the first book that I showed in this video was The Gilded Wolves. And the last book that I showed in this video is The Gilded Wolves. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I see Luna and I'm excited. So the February theme is Whimsical Beasts and every box will contain an exclusive item designed by Four Seasons Fox. And oh my god, if it is something Sailor Moon, that would be the best. Here is the little art card that says Whimsical Beasts, and then there's Luna on the back there again, which I think I might hang on my wall because this is so cute. But that is everything that came in Owl Crate. Those are all of the books that I've acquired in January. Let me know if you found anything that you hadn't heard of before, or if there's anything that you think that I need to read immediately. I hope that you all read Gilded Wolves and enjoy it because it was really, really good. That's all that I have for this video, so I will see you guys soon in a new one. Bye!